The rocket launch business used to be one of the hardest things humans attempted. For most of the 20th century, only governments could afford it. The United States and the Soviet Union were the main players, and even they faced constant failures. Two of the most well-known failures were the Challenger disaster in 1986 and the Columbia disaster in 2003. Those two accidents alone killed 14 astronauts and showed how dangerous and unforgiving spaceflight really was. Launching a single rocket often cost billions of dollars, and even small design changes required years of testing and approval. Because of that, the idea of a private company building and operating orbital rockets sounded unrealistic. That situation started to change in the early 2000s. SpaceX was founded in 2002. Its main goal was to reduce launch costs by building rockets in-house and reusing them. At the time, this approach went against everything the space industry believed. Most experts assumed reusable orbital rockets were impractical and too risky. SpaceX struggled for years, nearly running out of money before finally reaching orbit with Falcon 1 in 2008. From there, progress accelerated quickly. Falcon 9 first flew in 2010. In 2015, SpaceX successfully landed a Falcon 9 booster after an orbital mission. By the late 2000s, booster reuse became routine. Today, Falcon 9 has flown more than 500 times. In just over two decades, SpaceX became the dominant launch provider in the world. Once SpaceX proved that private companies could outperform traditional government-led programs, the industry changed. Other private companies saw a clear example to follow. If SpaceX could do it, then it was no longer unreasonable to think others could too. This led to the rise of several new space companies. Many failed, but a few succeeded enough to start competing with established players. Interestingly, these companies are not yet a serious threat to SpaceX itself. Instead, they are creating real pressure for Blue Origin. Blue Origin was founded in 2002 years before SpaceX. The company is funded by Jeff Bezos and has access to large financial resources. However, Blue Origin's progress toward orbital launch has been very slow. The company's main orbital rocket, New Glenn, was originally expected to fly in the early 2020s. That timeline has slipped several times. As of now, New Glenn has not flown to orbit. One major issue has been the BE-4 engine, which took years longer than expected to reach flight readiness. Those delays also affected United Launch Alliance, which selected the same engine for its Vulcan rocket. While Blue Origin continues working toward its first orbital launch, another company has already built a consistent launch record and is now moving into the same market. That company is Rocket Lab. Rocket Lab was founded in 2006 and reached orbit in 2018 with its Electron rocket. Electron is designed for small satellites and delivers about 300 kilograms to low Earth orbit. Rocket Lab has completed more than 70 successful Electron launches and maintains one of the highest launch cadences in the industry for small payloads. This allowed Rocket Lab to build real operational experience. The company manufactures its own engines, structures, and flight software. It also operates its own launch sites. A couple of years ago, Rocket Lab announced Neutron, a medium lift rocket designed to carry up to 13,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit. This puts Neutron in a class above Electron and directly into competition with Falcon 9 and New Glenn. Neutron is designed as a partially reusable rocket. The first stage will land on a drone ship, similar to Falcon 9. One of Neutron's most notable design choices is its fixed fairing. Instead of separating during ascent, the fairing remains attached to the booster. In orbit, the fairing opens to deploy payloads and then closes again before re-entry. Rocket Lab has already tested the system. The fairing can open and close in about 1.5 seconds under simulated flight loads. After completing these tests, the fairing was shipped to Launch Complex 3 at Wallops Island in Virginia. Rocket Lab has also installed a second-stage static fire test stand at the same site. This will be used to test Neutron's upper stage engine. If these tests proceed as planned, Rocket Lab expects Neutron's first flight to occur in early 2026. Neutron is powered by Rocket Lab's Archimedes engine. Archimedes runs on liquid methane and liquid oxygen and uses a staged combustion cycle.
This places it in the same general engine category as SpaceX's Raptor and Blue Origin's BE-4. At sea level, Archimedes produces about 730 kilonewtons of thrust, with a specific impulse of roughly 329 seconds. In vacuum, thrust increases to about 890 kilonewtons. Neutron uses nine Archimedes engines on its first stage. Blue Origin's BE-4 engine produces about 2,400 kilonewtons of thrust and also runs on methane and oxygen. However, BE-4's long timeline delayed both New Glenn and ULA's Vulcan rocket. In contrast, Rocket Lab has already completed multiple Archimedes test campaigns and is moving toward flight qualification. For comparison, SpaceX's Raptor engine sits in a different category altogether. The current operational version, Raptor 2, produces roughly 2,300 kilonewtons of thrust at sea level, similar in raw power to BE-4, but with a much higher chamber pressure of around 300 bar. SpaceX uses 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy Booster, generating more than 75,000 kilonewtons of thrust at liftoff, which completely dwarfs both Neutron and New Glenn. More importantly, Raptors are already flying regularly. SpaceX has built and tested hundreds of them and continues to iterate aggressively. SpaceX is now actively testing Raptor 3. Musk has stated that Raptor 3 targets higher thrust and chamber pressure, potentially exceeding 350 bar. So as you can see, Rocket Lab is much more of a problem for Blue Origin than it is for SpaceX. Neutron stands about 43.5 meters tall. Falcon 9 is much taller, at nearly 70 meters. This size difference explains the payload gap. Falcon 9 can carry up to 22.8 metric tons to low Earth orbit. Neutron tops out at around 13 to 15 tons, depending on mission profile. New Glenn is expected to exceed 40 tons once operational. Cost is where Neutron creates real pressure. Rocket Lab is targeting a launch price of about $55 million. Falcon 9 typically costs around $67 million. This is why Neutron is a bigger problem for Blue Origin than for SpaceX. SpaceX already dominates the launch market at a scale no other company comes close to. In 2023, SpaceX conducted 96 orbital launches, more than the rest of the world combined. In 2024, that number increased again to around 98 launches. In 2025 so far, SpaceX has already completed more than 130 launches. Blue Origin, by comparison, has zero orbital launches in 2023, 2024, and 2025 so far. Its New Shepard vehicle conducted only a small number of suborbital flights during those years, mostly for space tourism. SpaceX also became the most valuable private company in the world, reaching an estimated valuation of around $180 billion in 2023, which later climbed to over $200 billion in 2024. Starship is the main reason for those projections. Unlike Falcon 9, Starship is designed to be fully reusable, including both the booster and the spacecraft. The system is expected to deliver over 100 metric tons to low Earth orbit. SpaceX's long-term target is a launch cost of around $1 to $2 million per flight. So far, SpaceX has launched around 11 Starship test vehicles in total. The first fully integrated launch happened in April 2023, and since then SpaceX has steadily increased the pace. By the end of 2024, Starship had completed eight integrated launches, each one pushing the system further. If this launch pace continues, most signs point to 2026 being the year Starship begins early operational service. But even in a future where Starship is fully operational and SpaceX becomes even more dominant, Rocket Lab can continue to capture demand in the small and medium launch market. Blue Origin, on the other hand, is still waiting to enter orbit. If Neutron becomes operational in 2026, Rocket Lab could begin capturing customers before New Glenn fully enters service. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.